Blessings and love and welcome back to Sun Soul Astrology on YouTube. My name is Maruma Tu and we're going to be going over the aspects of this new moon in Taurus which is happening May the 4th of 2019 at 3.43 p.m. Pacific, 6.43 p.m. Eastern, and this is going to be happening at 14 degrees and 10 minutes of the fixed Earth sign that rules over the second house of the Zodiac and is ruled by Venus, but the sun and the moon are going to conjunct exactly, creating a new stage in our life that we're going to actually look backwards to see where we are headed next because this is a very important time frame and I do want to quickly mention that if you would like a personal reading with me you can visit sunsoulastrology.com my website and you can book a reading with me also I do starseed astrology and quantum astrology courses starseed dna lineage and also pimp my matrix is my astrological based clothing line all of the signs are here if you would like to subscribe to my daily planetary transmissions and starseed activations you can go to sunsoul.tv which can be accessed through the website there. And here is where you will access all of the daily translations for the transits, is again, as well as Starseed DNA Lineage. And each of these playlists does have every single day of the year available for you to download and to stream. So let us go ahead and get into this. And we're going to, again, be looking backwards so that we can look forward because a new moon is about a new stage. And Taurus is the second house that rules over money, possessions, value, and worth. Venus ruled sign means that it has to do with love and relationships and desire. We can also look at this energy as being where we have self-confidence, self-love, or if we have insecurities and instabilities. This is a big deal because we want to create from the inside out a world that matches our hopes, our dreams, our desires, and our wishes. Now, in astrology, the sun represents the soul and the moon represents our emotions, our emotions that we carry with us along the way that we accumulate and that we pack on our backs. Taurus is known to be a bit stubborn, right? It's the bull. And it can get very fixed as it's a fixed earth sign in its ways and not let go of certain possessions and emotional possessions. So this is where we're really going to understand if we're feeling this lack of consciousness or if we are allowing ourselves to feel truly abundant and move forward towards the future. Now, definitely like, comment, share, and subscribe if you like this video. We are going to look at the astrological placements, but I am going to pull some cards from the tarot deck for each of the 12 signs. I'm going to pull three cards and one overall oracle card. Now, if any of you are familiar with Astrology Hub, they are one of the world's leading astrology platforms. This is their 2019 Inner Circle Astrological Calendar, and I am the astrological guide for Gemini season, which is coming up in just a short amount of time. So if any of you are Inner Circle members of Astrology Hub, I am excited to definitely be working with you one-on-one -on -one for the lunar cycle, taking us through a new moon in Gemini, as well as a full moon in Sagittarius, and working on just some information that's really going to change and transform your way of looking at astrology. All right, so I'm going to quickly share the chart with you for this new moon experience. And if you're not an astro nerd, this might look a little bit crazy, but I'm going to break it down for you really quickly, okay? So the reason that I brought it up like this is because November 7th of 2018, we had a new moon at 15 degrees and 11 minutes of Scorpio. Now, this New moon and Taurus, the opposite sign, is happening at 14 degrees and 10 minutes. So that means that there's an opposition of less than one degree. Our degrees and orb mean how many degrees away from. The orb is separation, right? And planets either approach or they separate. That's just extra astro nerdy that you don't need to remember right now. But... Um, 
The session that we're starting now is closing out the phase that we went through again November 7th of 2018. And because Scorpio rules over the eighth house of our committed relationships and partnerships, this was a big deal because we were starting a new session within relationships, but something that's mirroring the now moment is that Venus was transiting through the end of Libra, moving into Scorpio, and Venus was in an opposition to Uranus at the very end of Aries, okay? Now, as we see, Venus is shortly coming up to conjunct with Uranus. So oppositions are about reflections, conjunctions are about a unifying energy, and it intensifies the energetics of both planets because they want to both be heard, they want to both be seen and felt. So for our next full moon stage, it's going to be in Scorpio on May 18th, and this will be with the sun and the moon in an opposition at 27 degrees. So the, new, the full moon in Scorpio will have the sun conjunct to the seven sisters, the Pleiades constellation that ranges from 26 degrees to zero degrees of Gemini, okay? That's a really, really, really big deal because there is this massive message from the universe about divine feminine energies and archetypes that have been suppressed by... You know, we can call it the lower vibrational male frequency that's gotten uh, the masculine archetype confused and not necessarily by any fault of their own, but through our cult social cultural conditions and norms. So whenever Uranus gets involved, it shatters any sort of tradition and also things that have become monotonous, stagnant, boring, um, that aren't providing some sort of stimulation and excitement because Venus rules over relationships and desire. It has a lot to do with our sexual relationships. And we're going to be going through a phase that starts right now that makes us make some major decisions about where we're headed in relationships and not just like what we desire to have in relationships, but also are the relationships in our lives worth it? Do they have value? Are they creating a stable foundation? Are they giving us security? Do they nurture us? Do they value us? Is there what I need to continue to feel like, you know, we want to bring in partnerships that support us in being our best selves ever, like hashtag living my best life ever. And if we are in relationships with people who are not on the spiritual growth pattern, who doesn't understand what an activated star seed is, because if you're here watching this, you are an activated star seed and you are about that life, okay? And being about that life means that we're here to change not just the activation codes within the DNA strands and structures of our physicality, but within the consciousness as a whole, because as we activate, we act as keys. So looking back, this is an important thing to realize once again, because yes, we had Venus and Uranus in an opposition. Venus was square to her lover, Mars, and Mars was transiting the sign of Aquarius, okay? Mars in the sign of Aquarius can make us very much... Um, confused at times, okay? It's like we want some sort of epic love affair. And this is actually when it was in an exact square because it was here at 25 degrees making that square, okay? And the other important part about that is that the nodes were just getting ready to change and we were moving into a different session altogether, taking us from, you know, being the stage performer, creative kind of like flair, um, flashy pants, and also this really like abstract soul nature into something that brought us very much into the home and into the family and into our relationships. So Venus was in a square to the nodes. Mars was conjunct to the south node opposite the north node. Um, Uranus was also square to the nodes. And right now, uh, Venus is approaching 
this dramatic square to the north and south node. So I did make a video on that about what it means whenever Venus squares our destiny points, our past and our future, and how we need to be the bridge with the definition of our value and our worth in order to take it to that next level. And so as you can see, we're in a very important time frame that isn't necessarily going to let us off the hook anytime soon. And I feel like I need to change something. Yes, I forgot to put the notes on here. <laughs> That's always fun and exciting. Come on, okay. There we go. So now this chart looks complete. All right, squares are challenges, they're motivations. And this is what we're coming up to is defining what is the challenge in our lives. This is gonna happen on the six, all right? Venus is not only squared to the north and south node, but also to Saturn and to Pluto. So this is a really like intense transit that is making us look at the fundamental foundational core of everything. And we have to use experience and wisdom and authenticity to really come at this session of time correct. Because whenever we get to the full moon in Scorpio, it's going to be closing out that new moon session. Mercury will also be conjunct to the Pleiades, conjunct to the sun, which makes our minds start to really overproduce um, stimulation okay uh it's like we're thinking about a lot of different things it can cause us to worry quite a lot because in the tarot deck what is it the five of discs is taurus in um or excuse me mercury in taurus and the card from the thought deck is called worry when we're worried about our obligations and meeting our needs we don't feel secure enough in producing and what kind of quality are we producing? Because a lot of times, whenever we're feeling insecure, unstable, we're not really feeling like at our most, then unfortunately we get really um, like shaky. We start to, to worry about too many things, mentally spreading ourselves in too many directions. And I will share the chart with you again, but I do want to make it from just this new moon that we are experiencing because I want to take a look and show you the aspects that are being made. Um, next, on the 18th, whenever we have the full moon in Scorpio, the only thing that's going to happen is the sun and the moon are going to oppose and it's going to make a very, very loose trine to Chiron. So that means that, you know, Scorpio is a sign of death and rebirth, and this new moon is opposite it. My sun is at 12 degrees of Scorpio. My Mercury is at 18. My south node is at 20 degrees of Scorpio. So this new moon isn't in opposition to all of that energy that I personally have in my chart in the eighth house. And that's kind of a big deal because the previous session of the new moon in Scorpio, it conjuncted that. And believe me, it started a new phase in my own life. Because as Venus, or excuse me, Mars goes through Gemini, it's very much like Mars going through the sign of Aquarius. Our attention has a very short span. And everything that's different, new, and stimulating is exciting. It's like becoming too much of a socializer, becoming too interested in using technology to, um, if, if you want to call it like spy or go towards our desires, like what's catching our eye, what's drawing us in. So yes, be prepared that many of these aspects can produce a lot of different um, scenarios that can be very shocking and very surprising. And this new moon specifically, is a very good one okay but it's a good one leading into a very relationship based chaotic time all right now i'm going to flip over to the grid chart because again we're going to be looking specifically at the aspects this new moon is making a trying to saturn it's at a six degree and 19 minute orb it's on the approach which means that it hasn't come to its apex it hasn't happened on the exact mathematics okay and as we build in this energy, it's going to get stronger every day. And with that being said, Saturn brings an intense amount of responsibility, wisdom, discipline, and authenticity, authority. But whenever it's retrograde as it is right now, it means that we need to spiritualize all of those aspects. 
Saturn is also the Lord of karma and time. So with a positive aspect happening to this new moon, which is planting new seeds and building security, value, and strength um, through the filter of self-love, self-worth, and self-value, we know that we need to make a disciplined action to create a foundation that is going to last, that has to do with our soul. And our soul is very fertile right now, and it needs to really deepen the love. We're also making a sextile to Neptune, the planet of dreams, intuition, and imagination. It rules over the 12th house and Piscean energy. It's on the approach of three degrees and 57 minutes, which means our intuitions are going to take an expanded um, earthbound approach. That's how I want to say that. It's like creating your dreams and making them reality, but also Neptune causes illusions and delusions. It makes us question the nature of our reality. And for those who are just kind of getting started in the journey, that's not always the best thing. But for those who really understand what their journey of the soul entails, you could think of it as Christ consciousness, then it's absolutely um, a really big positive. Moon and Neptune is so so extra dimensionally psychic, so empathic and intuitive. Um, this is going to be a really great time again to plant the seeds of your dreams that you're passionate about and do desire to create. Um, but also realize that this is about stability becoming unstable. So whatever you've locked yourself into become rigid on because we're having a trying to the south node. The sun is trining the north node. This is important because, excuse me, <laughs> the new moon is trying to the south node, the moon and the sun. Now, I'm going to stop sharing this, but the south node is our past life mastery, our soul's mastery. From incarnation to incarnation, we have attracted and experienced so many different types of relationships. We know our value of our soul from a higher dimensional perspective once again. Now we need to really bridge that and we need to incarnate it, embody it here on earth so that whenever Venus starts to truly square the nodes, which it already is, it's square to Pluto. That's a bit rough on the psychological processes of love and triggers as well as jealousy and um, you know, spying. There's a lot involved and I'm going to stick just to this new moon, but don't forget that we need to remember that this is not our first time around the block and that we have a lot to offer. So don't sell yourself short and also don't allow anybody to take advantage of you. Know that you do have options and that you are able to make a new decision because if we're not making new decisions and doing things in new ways, creating this optimism, creating like an open channel to flow. If, if anything feels blocked off, we're going to literally break free. And that's what this all has to do with. But the upcoming transits are very specific to love and relationships. And yes, we want to, um, you know, evolve the relationship. But I know for a fact, some of us out there don't want to leave our relationships behind. But also, we can't self-sacrifice any longer to relationships that we've outgrown and that are not supportive or conducive to where we are going and not only where we're going but where we are at the moment okay so let's go ahead and get into the tarot and for anyone who would like to see uh there where this is transiting in your own personal house i did a video for all of the 12 signs and i'm going to base this tarot off of who which sign had the most views so far so we're going to be starting with Aquarius and then Gemini, you're going to be up next. So this is for the energy of Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising for the new moon in Taurus for Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. And again, we're going to be pulling three tarot cards and one oracle for Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. Overall message for the new moon in the sign of Taurus. So first card up is the moon card, which is Pisces energy, okay? 
And what this card is reminding us of is that it is going to take an imaginative mind, an imaginative soul to really extend into that intuitional realm and really, really understand how you feel about your relationships, your finances, and the structure of your stability. Because this is talking about a very as above, so below, like those emotions that you're storing, they need to be released and they need to come out and be processed. And Aquarius, you are the ruler of the 11th house, the quantum realm, and that's a pretty big deal. So second card out is the two of wands, which is domination, okay? This is the Mars and Aries card. Mars rules over Aries, which is the lover of Venus. And this is definitely leading to, there may be some chaotic, like, emotions. Um, feeling like either somebody has been dominating over you emotionally, like you've been giving your emotional power away, or um, you're not controlling the issues that may be coming up in reference to, um, it's like whenever we are in relationships and then we break up and we move on, right? Uh, <laughs> it's a funny thing because sometimes we're still watching our ex-partner or they're watching us and certain things we're just kind of exposing ourselves to trigger after trigger and we're making up shit in our own mind so aquarius what this is definitely letting me know is that there is a fresh new beginning waiting for you because the final card is the full which is your card okay this is zero point energy this is uranian energy and this is saying you're starting off on a brand new session of life so go ahead and hit that reset button and allow yourself to come back on this cycle Definitely for you in particular, it's coming across strong that you should absolutely think back to November, that first week, and, and what was going on in relationships. Are any of those triggers coming back around to be released? Because we have to let go of whatever was happening over this session of time in order to make this new start. And a lot of times we're so like emotionally and energetically connected to our partners and relationships that it's hard, um, especially whenever we're attracted. Now, another group of Aquarian energy that I'm tapping into is that you do actually have some sort of um, divine partnership in your life that you are connected to, and there is a lot of passion brewing, and there's a lot of excitement. So one of the ways that this is coming through is that Aquarius, if you or your partner wants to try something new in the bedroom, wants to experiment with something you've never done, open yourself up to that idea, because if you remain in a stagnant and boring sense, as well as if your partner does, it's not going to be working out so well, okay? So make sure that you are doing your part to be new and be different, okay? Now, the overall card that we got for the Oracle is Temple of Carnelian, entering the fierce belly of Sekhmet, okay? So yeah, this does have to do with some scorpionic vibrations, and I'm just going to read the first paragraph. It is from this deck right here. I'm not going to say it out loud. I'm not going to put it in the description of the video because I pretty much got demonetized from my last videos, whatever I mentioned intensely whose oracle deck this was and what oracle deck it is, because obviously we live in that world right now. So if you do happen to have this deck, then it is page 179 if you would like to tap into the overall energy of it. But, and also feel free to timestamp the signs. I will do my best, but in case I don't. All right, you have such strength within you. It is time to trust your own boldness and courage, taking risks that feel true to your heart and engaging in practices that make you feel truly and genuinely alive, embodied, and more of yourself, even if not always comfortable, are going to help you live the life you were born to live. And that's perfect for you, Aquarius. Um, you know, you're not one to get stuck in energies. And Aquarius, you're very confident 
and forward moving sign. And this is just an affirmation of confirmation that this is a new start. There's a lot of passion. Just use that passion in the right way. Don't let yourself get distracted by illusions and also emotions. Really use that um, focus and drive to tune into the emotional connections that you have with things that you really do value and find to be worthy, which for a lot of us could definitely be the relationship that we have with ourselves because we need to no longer be self-conscious. We need to be soul conscious and we need to be abundant in that. All right. So Gemini, thank you so much for being the second most viewed sign. And I'm going to go ahead and shuffle. Cancer, you are up after Gemini. All right. So the energy, the overall energy for Gemini, sun, moon, and rising. New moon, May 4th, 2019 for Gemini, sun, moon, and rising signs. For the new moon happening in Taurus, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. For Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. All right, Gemini, let's see what we got going on for you. Interesting, we got the Moon card as well. So again, um, a lot of us, no matter what sign we are, we're going to really have to let go of emotional stagnation and really allow our dreams and our intuitions to guide us forward. Um, Pisces can... It's, it's a mutable sign just like yourself, Gemini, and it's about change. But Piscean energy can go into escapism whenever it feels like there's too much at task, too much at hand. And Mars is transiting through your sign at the Master Deccan. And there are a lot of distractions. This moon card can be emotional distractions and because mars is in your sign it can also allude to the fact that there are physical distractions that are kind of creating some emotional situations within you interesting gemini we also have another square energy which is the hangman the hangman is also pisces it's neptune neptune is the great dissolver right and being in a hangman position is like being stagnant gemini squares both of these cards like if we're looking at the energy of gemini and how it affects the chart it squares to pisces the 12th house um of course, the moon card can represent cancer energy where the north node is transiting, but it's like there is an illusion in your life, Gemini, a possible lie that you've been told or that you've been telling yourself. And this new moon stage really wants you to get out of whatever stagnation you've been in because the hangman is definitely representing um, there's some stagnation because you're believing in something that intuitively you know is not right. You know somebody's not being completely and totally upfront with you. And that's really interesting because, you know, Gemini, I don't feel like that's typical of your energy is to entertain those things. And this card popped out. Uh, Ten of Cups, which is Venus and Pisces, okay? So all of these are Piscean cards, all of them. Or it's actually Mars and Pisces. So this is like becoming very satisfied becoming very trustworthy about your intuitions, but it's like you are so super psychic in another aspect of this, what I'm tuning into, and you need to really trust that. If you want to be successful emotionally and also, this is like your talents and abilities growing, Gemini. Maybe somebody is kind of like psychically attacking you or gaslighting you to not believe in your own abilities. Maybe you want to get into tarot, astrology, some sort of divination or healing work. And the people in your life and even your relationship partnerships are telling you that that's not, like you don't have what it takes. You shouldn't do that. That's crazy. That's stupid. Because you're on point. And it's like you're really passionate about um, – the esoteric right now you're really passionate about soul growth and soul transformation and you're really recognizing that yeah you do have to let go of some emotional baggage 
And uh, you do have to let go of some people that have been very satisfied with creating illusions in your life to keep you from outgrowing them. So the energy from the Oracle deck for Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising signs for the new moon is Pillar of Light. All right. Um, this actually is very fitting. And it is... Descendant, descent of the star of homegirl, <laughs> one of the most beautiful goddess queens that I just can't say the name of. How sad. Okay. Pillar of Light is page 117. And Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Beings of light and divinity are calling you now. They wish to connect with you more strongly and you are being guided to strengthen your energy field to allow more of the divine light that seeks you to flow through your body safely and into expression. So this has to do with building your strength and being a pillar of light, which means that a lot of energy blockages are going to have to get transmuted and you're going to have to open up, okay? Surrounding yourself with light and protection that that is coming to you now. Trust your intuitions. Don't stay in any sort of stagnant waters. Move ahead and allow yourselves to. Um, and let go of those past emotions that have been weighing you down. All right, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Let's go ahead and shuffle the cards before I light this book on fire. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a Uranian moment. I'm going to go ahead and take a cleansing pause so that we're getting some fresh energy in here each and every time. And next time, if you would like for your sign to come up first, make sure to share the videos so that your sign has an opportunity to create the most watched and be first on the list, okay? All right. So, Cancers, my intuitive beings who rule over the fourth house of the zodiac, cardinal water. All right, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising for the new moon in Taurus, May 4th of 2019. Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising, overall energy. For Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising, for the New Moon, and the Sign of Taurus. All right. So three cards absolutely popped out, to, to tell you the truth, actually, four. <laughs> um, shoot, that's five, Cancer. And it's like I can't not take them, right? That's just kind of how it is. One of them is a major arcana, which is a death in reverse. This is a scorpionic card. So this is about the death and rebirth. We know that this new moon is in an opposition to the eighth house of Scorpio. The eighth house of Scorpio has to do with other people's resources and also hidden esoteric information. This is whatever is not being presented or shown. And because this is in reverse, it already is letting me know that you're on the other side of a major transformation and that you've already unveiled and uncovered a tremendous amount of truth that had to do with what somebody was suppressing in your life. Um, you might have been suppressing it or a partner, a love interest may have been suppressing it because we have the two of swords, which is peace. And this is the moon in Aquarius. So this is telling me that you definitely had to detach from an emotional connection that you had to someone or something that meant a lot to you. And you had to actually take your emotional um, self and, and give yourself peace. Okay. That that is the rebirth process that you're in right now, Cancer, and you've already discovered it. So moon in Cancer, the four of cups, which is luxury. And this has a lot to do with our emotional accumulation of possessions. This could be happy thoughts, happy memories, um, like emotional possessions that make us feel like 
there's goodness because there's emotional satisfaction happening here as well. And of course, we all want emotional satisfaction. And if this hasn't already happened for you, Cancer, then this is something that's on the horizon. So if you're presently going through, um, you know, finding out and discovering some really harsh truths about some situations, and you're realizing that you have some sort of codependent factor, and that's what's creating this rift or um, triggers or pain, it's like, Letting go of those emotions is going to lead to emotional abundance um, with the Four of Cups. Now, we do have the Ten of Swords, which is Ruin, and this is the Sun in Gemini. So this has a lot to do with disinformation, things coming to light, uh, the perceptions between positive and negative. Whenever the sun moves into Gemini, we all kind of get short attention spans. And whenever we're not taking the time and checking the details and really paying attention to what we value and what we find worthy, then sometimes we're acting out of control and out of character. So a lot of times we can absolutely ruin foundations based off of things that we're saying uh, and things that we're doing. So make sure that you're mindful of that and that you're not just holding yourself to integrity, but you're holding the people around you to integrity. Now, this is definitely relationship-based for you, Cancer, because we have the Three of Swords in reverse, which is Saturn in Leo. And this is talking about the ending of a relationship and um, you knowing who you are, Cancer, is what's leading to some of the discomfort and the sorrow that is going on in your relationship, whether you're with this person or you're totally separated from them and you have been for, like, say, going back to November. Say November for you, Cancer, was the beginning of the end. And now there's been this session of time that you've been a part, but it's also because you realized you couldn't stay there and stay in integrity, that the relationship was costing you way too much. And it was bringing about a lot of discontent energy, like dissatisfaction, which was causing sorrow. And because it's upside down, again, this represents a past energy for me, like you've already come through it. And you're facing something so different, but possibly, very possibly, um, whatever it was has reemerged for you. Again, whether in the physical or the etheric realm. So Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising, the overall oracle card for the new moon in Taurus happening May 4th. Isis has also given you the temple of Carnelian, entering the fierce belly of Sekhmet. How interesting is that, right? Because also Aquarius got that card. And I believe it was page 74, if I have a memory right now. That would be pretty cool. I don't. Okay, that's not it. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to look it up all over again. And bear with me because there's so much information to be held. Page 179. OMG. Okay. You have such strength within you, Cancer. It is time to trust in your own boldness and courage. Take risks that feel true to your heart and encourage in... <laughs> and engaging in practices that make you feel truly and genuinely alive, embodied in more of yourself, even if not always comfortable, are going to help you live the life that you were born to live. All right. Yes, Cancer. So definitely, you know, don't look back from whatever you've moved on from. And it's like, definitely take note because Again, some of you have not encountered this massive like death to a situation. And because this is a new moon in Taurus, this definitely has to do with um, just our stability in general. And that has to do with our finances. And there may have been a major transformation. Whenever some of those cards come up, it's like, it's about missing misuse and abuse in some of the senses whenever we're we're basically being taken advantage of by some of our relationships because we have something to give we have an abundance of emotions and care and nurturing 
cancer as you are. And it could definitely make people want to take advantage of those really great qualities within you. And sometimes people take your kindness for weakness, and that is not the truth, Cancer. So that card is reminding you to like invoke your inner scorpionic energy and have courage and strength, okay? So I guess the spirits really wanted to talk to you. All right, Virgo, you are up next. Virgo, sun, moon, and rising. For the new moon in Taurus happening on May 4th, 2019. For the overall energy of Virgo, sun, moon, and rising. For May the 4th of 2019. For Virgo. Ooh, the full card pops out first. Major Arcana Trump card. Um, again, ruled by Uranus and representing Aquarian as well as Aries energy. So this is the start for you. And Virgo, you rule over health, wealth, and daily routines. Having a healthy daily routine will end a, like a successful routine schedule will lead to great wealth. And because you're so detail oriented and you like structure, you like to make lists. And honestly, Virgo, um, for the full card to come up for you, it's going to require you to radically change those things that you feel like are really boring to you right now, because this is saying you are literally craving a different way of reacting and responding. Like you're not interested in maintaining the same status quo that you have been up until now. All right. So we also have the emperor card, which is Aries, divine masculine and Mars. So yes, this could be you Virgo sun, moon rising in a place of power and authority. And the emperor can be very, very um, studious and demanding. Virgo, you already have a tremendous amount of high expectations. Like you demand that things are done correctly and in the order in which you've dictated them to be correct in. All right. So I'm um, just going to focus this card. Just remember that as you allow yourself to jump into this new beginning, that you're just not bringing your past expectations with you. You're being called to uphold a higher standard, which is going to ask you to let go of um, expectations, conditions, and the old way of doing things that you are quite uh, rooted into because those are not going to fulfill you moving forward. And therefore, um, you know, all work and no play makes Jill a dull girl or Joe a dull boy. And that's really like the vibe that I'm picking up from these two major arcanas. I mean, these are two major arcanas. This is saying like a brand new leadership position is in your immediate future. That all you have to do is open up your perspectives, see things from a different angle and go for it. Just at the same time, don't get too dictatory because as you know, Virgo rules over um, OCD detail orientedness and it's too much for some people to handle right now. So if you are Virgo, sun, moon and rising, who's being offered a position um, within leadership, then know that you don't have to go at it like a crazy person. And also, we have another Virgo card up for you, which is Venus and Virgo. This is the snobby Venus card for me. And this is the nine of discs, which is gains, okay? So this is definitely saying that, Virgo, you are so fucking winning right now. Um, this is not just about, like, career. This is also about relationship. But obviously, if you're a Virgo that's out there and you're kind of in a stagnant uh, position, whether it's in your relationships or in your um, relationships or your career. I don't know if I said that. Um, yeah. You're being called to ask to do something quantum, okay? And to really learn how to work with the energy of the divine masculine, even if you're a feminine. Okay, and so 
divine masculines, even if you're a male, you're being asked to invoke some of this divine feminine energy with Venus. And the only way for you, Virgo, right now to gain is to really pay attention to if you're putting your energy towards what you definitely do want, okay? Moving forward, not what the system and previous generations have told you that you're supposed to want, but what you really do desire and you feel like fills up your cup. And um, like when you look back on your accomplishments in life, that you're going to be very, very, very grateful that you put in the work and the action and the discipline, this is saying that you've learned a lot from relationships and that this has been a, a, a learning lesson with relationships to money and love. And you're coming out on top. So that's a really positive reading for you, Virgo. Like, damn, okay. But there's a lot of detached energy in here. Venus and Virgo isn't the most detached. It's pretty conditional in a lot of senses. The Emperor, it can't be detached to things that are not going along on its path. And of course, Uranian Aquarius, Aquarius, the fool card energy is like, it doesn't know how to be attached just yet. It's learning on this zero point energy, how to be able to jump timeline to timeline, dimension to dimension. It's also saying that Virgo, you're activating a lot of your extraterrestrial DNA. And um, you may be discovering who your higher self really is through this time frame. And for Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising Oracle card, overall information from the beautiful goddess that rules over Sirius. We'll just say that. Um, Isis Oracle for the new moon and Taurus for Virgo. Oh, here we go. These ones pop out so fast because I work with this energy so much. Miracle of this beautiful goddess who rules over Sirius. Miraculous healing of the goddess. And Virgo, you are a earth sign, feminine energy, mutable. And that's a beautiful thing because you represent harvesting and also health and wellness. Like, you know, acupuncture, cranial sacral, natural path. Activating crystal grids within the Earth's matrix. These are all really positive things for you personally during this new moon. And miracle. Page 106. All right, Virgo. Isis. Oh, my God. Um, beep was known as a talented practitioner of the healing arts and was capable of mir miraculous healings. You, for you, beloved, she offers a miracle healing. No matter how much you have struggled with a particular matter, no matter how impossible it may seem to imagine your life without this old wound, addiction, problem, relationship issue, or inner struggle being a part of it, you are guided now to accept the possibility of miraculous healing, to let go and let the goddess be. Just be. Wow, that's so deep, Virgo. That was your card for this deck. And, you know, if it slips here and there, uh, it's just, it is what it is. But Taurus, you're up next, okay? So happy solar return to all of you Tauruses out there. Happy lunar return to any of you Taurus moons. And also, if you are a Taurus rising, then blessings and abundance to you because Venus is, Mercury is soon going to move into your sign on the 6th. It's going to conjunct to Uranus. And then on the 16th is whenever Venus is going to go home and bless your first house. Your rising is how other people see you. Okay, so you can consider it to be the mask or um, the energy that you want to be known for. And that's really powerful. It really is because this supercharges you. And it also, anything that's transiting your rising, a.k.a. your AC, is in an opposition to your DC, which is your perfect partnership. And talking about the attributes and traits that you do want in your partners, okay, which means that that's in the sign of Scorpio. So you are attracted to dark, mysterious occultisms and to um, 
you know, uh, things that cause a lot of transformation in your life, relationships that cause transformation. Okay, Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. For your happy solar return, especially to those of you who are having your birthday on this new moon energy, and especially if it's happening on your actual day of your birthday, your solar return, then this is beyond a new phase. You are legitimately um, going to be financially secure moving forward, but it's going to come through your own self-value and self-love. And that's one other thing that, you know, I forgot to mention throughout is that if you don't have self-love and self-value, self-worth from the inside out, it's not going to generate in your finances. Okay, so the more that you love and attend and care for yourself, no matter, the more you're absolutely going to generate everything that you've ever wanted. All right, Taurus, so this is for the overall energy, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising, for your new moon in your sign. Ooh, the Aeon card. This is really deep because this is talking about moving from a previous dimension and time-space continuum into a quantum nature. This very much looks like the DMT world and ayahuasca land. This is the overall energy of the higher self. This is about truly knowing that we are more than we can ever realize within a physical flesh suit. So in order to realize more, Taurus, you're being asked to expand your consciousness and to learn new ideas that will basically break the old system of your foundations so that you're not holding on to nor hoarding any sort of beliefs that no longer serve you, okay? That is like, oh my God, right? That is really like, oh my God. And I'm going to shuffle again for Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising. So that's like, wow, you know, that's so crazy. Ooh, okay. Um, damn Taurus. To finish off your reading, lovers in reversed Gemini and Libra adjustment right side up. These are two major relationship cards, which leads me to believe that Taurus, you are walking into a brand new session of love and relationships. This is like, a very um, like divine partnership, twin flame type of energy. And this is in reverse. So it's saying either you've let go of a divine partner or you've just let go of like the twin flame archetype, right? Because Gemini is sister, brother. We know the soulmates and divine partners could be sisters, brothers, um, family members, platonic friends. And that whenever we start to put labels onto relationships and call them our twin flames, they don't always work out. And sometimes we stay stubborn and rigid and we stay in a false sense of security because we put this false label on it. So this is definitely indicating that there is someone or something in your life that is very important to you that you feel this connection with, but you either let go of that relationship or that label. And that has a lot to do with you expanding into a new timeline and into a deepening of your soul. Because, you know, it's like, why do people go through such spiritual evolutions? And it's usually because something has happened that's tested us or that shook our foundation. And of course, Taurus, you have Uranus transiting your sign for the next seven years. So that's 100% going to cause anything that used to have some sort of label on it to be obliterated. And so this may be asking for a different perspective. Um, yeah, you're going to have to change your mind. You're going to have to change your perspective. And you're also going to have to change the way that you're communicating in this important connection that you have. Because adjustment, which is naturally justice, the scales of balance are really coming back. Like, there is something that has been left out of whack and justice is being served. So whatever this is, it has to do with your relationship specifically. It's Libra who's ruled by Venus, your natural ruler. Okay. 
um, this is a big deal because this card really shows it like life. It's just like Uranus coming in a Taurus. It's going to shake things up. And even if you're on a rocking boat at sea and things are going up and down, she has balls like, okay, this is her scale hanging off of her crown, which is representing being tapped into the intuitions and consciousness that she can actually see things coming before they happen. And this is the ancient Eastern African goddess Ma'at. Okay, who rules over the 42 universal laws. Thou shall not overstep my boundaries of concern. Thou shall not speak ill to myself. It's like these core essential values that you really do base your security and foundations off of. Um, you're learning how to give yourself the gift of balance and justice by forgiving. Um, any of these things that were, you know, th this has so much to do with like, whoever this person is in your relationship sector, whether you're with them or not, you have been with them in multiple lifetimes, okay, they are part of your multidimensional self. And with that being said, there is a, a big shift that needs to occur. But justice is being brought to the situation and the scales are being balanced out so that things can be just right. And the major message that I want to give to you personally, Taurus, is that to make things just right, this is like level up. This is super level up. And, you know, if you're the partner of Taurus or it's like you're going to have to level up to approach your energy. Um because it's like too much change has happened, too much evolution, too much knowledge about what's beyond to keep things in a simplistic form any longer and to be caught up in labels and definitions. So it's like if you want to really kind of adjust this, then it's going to take a quantum leap to tell you the truth. And that's about like, you know, looking back kind of a thing, because there's only forward movement for you, Taurus. Uranus transiting your sign is not going to let you go backwards. It's not. So Taurus, the oracle card for you, for Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising is, oh, so appropriate. Stay true and be in your power. Osiris and his counterpart who are twin flames, okay, soul-based unions, divine partnerships, Lord and Lady of Divine Authority, all right? This is a big deal for you, Taurus, truly, 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 for um, the lover's card to come out. All right, stay in your power. Stay true and be in your power. 165. There yet. You are a sovereign divine being with spiritual authority and freedom within you. You do not need permission from anyone to be who you are and live your life as you so choose. This is your divine birthright. Guard it as the precious treasure that it is and remember that you are a divine being. Yes, Ducky is serving as affirmation, confirmation to that. Because you know, Taurus, you're a fixed earth sign. Sometimes things are slower for you in, in some fashions, right? It's like you really do have to like check in and, and think about if this is right for you. So some of these things um, that you're being asked to reclaim your power in, it took a long time for you to decide to give that power away in the first place. And so you didn't make the decision lightheartedly to go into something. And so it's a, not the easiest decision now on the other side to basically throw caution to the wind and really balance out the injustice that has previously happened. And of course, what is it that you are keeping in your physical space, Taurus, that's reminding you? of past timelines? Good question. All right, so 
gave those a quick shuffle. And Pisces, you are up next. After Pisces, we're going to do Scorpio. And this is for Sun, Moon, and Rising Signs for Pisces, okay? And yeah, I'm going to keep the Palo Santo burning. Keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. Yeah, we not want no Babylonian blood glut, ras glut, tings and what not business, you know them what what tings and tings. Any sort of negative energies or cords sticking to any of us or the cards. All right, Pisces. I am a Pisces moon and rising sign, as well as my Mars placement is there, all in the 12th house. All right, so Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising for the new moon happening on May the 4th of 2019. Taurus, new moon for Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Overall energies for you, Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. And again, make sure that you do check out your astrology transits for the next two weeks, as well as the Tarot and Oracle, which is all in the playlist for May, the Energy Clarifiers. And one more shuffle for you, Pisces. Sun, moon, and rising. Sun, moon, and rising. All right, three cards out immediately. Another major arcana, your card, the moon card. And right, it was Aquarius and Cancer that also got this. So now you, Pisces, this is very fitting. This is you, okay? Uh, very me as well. Moon in the 12th house, Pisces. What up? Um, this is also very Cancerian, so nurture your intuitions, all right? Like right now is the season to start new and not hoarding anything. So Pisces, you may very well be being called to deeply cleanse, all right? Our cells and our organs, they hold memories. They hold those nostalgic feelings and also... It's like let go of whatever of that is clogging you up and blocking you from any intuitions that are trying to come in and also imaginative creative expression because Pisces, you rule over the dream world, all right? You rule over imagination and it is a lot of work in this world to maintain a healthy sense of imagination without becoming like delusional and kind of, you know, askew. We can tend to want to make up our own stories in our minds that unfortunately we get very disappointed when things aren't really real. And the reason I say that is because it is, again, the three of swords, sorrow, Saturn in Libra. So the, the responsibility of our relationships is weighing us down right now. Any sort of toxic emotions is going to be weighing you down and it's going to be causing a, a rift in your relationship. Okay. Um, for those of you Pisces who are coupled, uh, you're, you got a lot on your mind. You don't, you're, you're tapping into something that you feel like your partner's up to because we have the five of discs, worry, Mercury and Taurus. Um, something makes you feel like a stable foundation in relationships is presently crumbling and it's got you very, very insecure on a lot of levels, okay? It's got you insecure about your finances. Also, it's testing your self-worth. It's making you question if you do this by yourself, if you're going to be able to. For those of you Pisceans who are not in a relationship, then I feel like this is your, you need to tap into your own intuitions because they're your higher guides are trying to let you know that there's new opportunities for creative projects to bring you new streams of income. But whatever it is that you're in a relationship with, and this could be substances, it could be whatever you use to escape. Um, a lot of this energy here is really heavy, Pisces. So it may just be saying that you don't have enough energy right now to even like be imaginative or creative. And even if these divine inspired ideas were coming to you, you don't necessarily have like the motivation to get up and make it happen. And in another sense for another group of Pisces, excuse me, that I'm tapping into, it's like, man, um, 
Don't overthink shit right now. Don't play into your insecurities. For you also, Pisces, don't let anybody be an energy vampire in your life. Don't let anybody psychologically manipulate you or gaslight you. Pisces, you're super empath. And um, worry has to do with mind games being played, okay? And it's the kind of mind games that's like, you know, whenever you're in a relationship or it, this could be intimate, it also could be employment wise, whenever it's like, you know what, if you're not going to do the job, then I'll just go out and hire somebody who's willing to do it. So it threatens your security of having a paycheck. And then in relationships, it's like, if you, if you leave me or if I decide to leave you, you're never going to find anybody as good as me. Who's going to want you now? Like, Look at you, all these different fucking shit that you go through, Pisces. Pisces, you're so kind and caring and see the best in everyone that they could really, like cancer, use your weakness to their advantage. And this is like the end of the road for that, big time. So Pisces, do not let yourself be in a state of lower vibrations because this is saying that some of you Pisces out there are majorly depressed because... And this also could be your partner, Pisces, um, your partner in the now moment or your partner that you're separated from that you may not even have any contact with other than energy. And somebody is feeling very depressed and very lonely and very worried about their foundations, their security system, and if they have what it takes. And um, it doesn't feel like there's any emotional stability or happiness here at the moment for either you or the partner of you that I'm tapping into. Again, you don't have to be in a relationship because energy is so unique. Um, and as I was, look, you know, showed you back into November, a lot of relationships ended. And uh, what, that's been about four months so uh, it's about time for those cycles to come back. We just went through a Mercury retrograde. Divine healing. <laughs> healing the divine masculine. Osiris rises. All right. So this is actually pretty on point for uh, we, we do need to heal some of these things. It's like Osiris was dismembered. And again, he was the counterpart of his beloved Oh my goodness gracious, come on, focus, focus. That's like the Piscean thing. Um, being unfocused, not that you're unfocused, but you rule over nebulous, undefinable energy. All right, so healing the divine. Yeah, he was dismembered. He was taken away. He had to be put back together, remembered and then reincarnated <laughs> and it's like man that can shake our our um self-worth that could really shake our self-confidence and pisces or partner pisces this shit's got you shook right now because the moon card is very reflective about how you emotionally feel and mercury is communications and decisions saturn is responsibility and Somebody didn't come to the relationship authentically. They just didn't. Somebody dropped the fucking ball and caused a serious rift. Just fucking same. All right, page 71. Again, Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising, or anyone watching this as a cross watcher who wants to know, it is this Oracle deck right here by Alana Fairchild. I'm not saying it so that I don't get demonetized. The divine masculine within men and women is the energy that allows for protection, discernment, healing, and a sense of deep safety and holding, even though the most uncomfortable, even through the most uncomfortable circumstances in life. When the masculine within us is healthy and strong, we have an inner strength to hold ourselves safe through anything. Your inner masculine is going through healing right now, growing stronger in his ability to offer you inner protection and stability so that your inner feminine can blossom with creative expression. Wow, that really just does sum it up, Pisces. And of course, that was pretty fucking deep as you are the deepest, you know, <laughs> 
12 houses. Hold up your hands. Shout out to the 12th house, Pisces. All right, Scorpio, you are up next. Shout out to my fellow Scorpios, sun, moons, and rising signs. I'm going to give a quick palo santo. So hold on one second, man, mal mia cleanse, because Scorpio, we rule over the eighth house of the zodiac, death and rebirth, as well as contract agreements. And for me, it's about our quantum soul contracts. And these whole experiences from lifetime to lifetime are based off of the contracts that we go through through the death and rebirth processes and we constantly reincarnate into new sessions stages and cycles of life and time and that's why your major arcana scorpio is the death card all right and it, we rule over transformation we're ruled by pluto and mars so we're incredibly passionate and intense, all right? We are very intense, a little bit too much for a lot of people. And that's okay. Be unapologetically that. And also, Scorpio, this new moon is in an opposition to your sign, which is going to cause you to really be aware of something um, that you weren't previously seeing. Okay, Scorpio rules over a cult which means hidden information. And right now, you're going to be able to see psychically and intuitively a lot deeper. All right, so for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising, for the new moon happening May the 4th, 2019, in the sign of Taurus, your opposite. So if you're a Sun in the first house, then um, this is happening in your seventh house of relationships. If you are a son in the second house, it's happening in your eighth house of committed soul contractual relationships. And yeah, sorry, I guess I got a little spoiling on the Scorpios with that information. But yeah, it's, it's worth it to know because <clears throat> you're Scorpio, you need to know all the information, you're an investigator. So Scorpio, sun, moon, and risings. The energy for the new moon happening May the 4th. First card out is truce, okay? This is Jupiter and Libra. Um, <laughs> funny because you know what, Scorpio, you're really great at forgiving people, but you will never forget what anybody has ever done to you. And this is the Four of Swords. It's like crossing through the heart. There, there's a need to forgive. There's a need to expand your beliefs and philosophies about relationships in order to move forward, all right? Because as we go through life, we go through so many different types of relationships and they can really make us jaded at the end of the day. And, oh, wow, okay, Scorpio, why, right? The Nine of Swords, Cruelty, Mars and Gemini, where Mars is presently transiting. And this is like, Mars and Gemini in general can cause arguments and disagreements, fights, the need, why do we need a truce if we're not arguing or fighting? Okay. There's, there's something that has either happened or is just about to happen for you, Scorpio, that is going to require you to hold your tongue and also hold your reaction. Somebody may be coming in in order to apologize to you um but they're coming in hot they're coming in fast their energy is super expanded they're looking to make an offer of a relationship in scorpio for you what is dead stays dead okay eight town scorpio it's ruled over by osiris god of the underworld and in this deck of the oracle we give things over to osiris damn it scorpio um to stay dead. Like what Osiris says, what is dead that you're having a hard time letting go of? Give it to me so that I can hold it with love and compassion. And you don't have to worry about it. It can stay in the underworld because fucking Scorpio, right? The tower in reverse. This is our card. This is also Mars. This is also Aries energy. Um, but yeah, something crumbled and fell. And the reverse is saying that this foundation that was weak and unstable 
it already happened. It is a soul-based contract, okay? That, to me, this is a very soul-based con contract because it's like emotions, passions, desires. There's a lot of sexual energy. There's a lot of need. Um, a lot of this is codependency. And so whenever you're being codependent on an energy that's no longer there for you, it can cause you to feel rejection and also feel like you're going through another tower moment. So I feel like a tower moment that already happened in the past is coming back and is going to happen again. And it's going to be probably Scorpio because you're just like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Do you not remember what happened? Like if you're not here to really like level up, fess up, come with the absolute, then legitimately step the fuck back. And it's sad in a sense, Scorpio, because it really does feel like energetically so that whoever's coming in, and Scorpio, don't let this be you coming in hot and fast on somebody else. Don't do this to somebody else right now because all the Uranian energy that we're coming up to and this need to start a new beginning fast because our values and our security is rocked. Don't let this be you coming to somebody else. And um, <clears throat> it's like Jupiter is a benefic, okay? So it, it's like the person has this idea that they're coming to bless you with a relationship. And like they got the gift of gab, like they can say all the right things in all the right ways. All they have to do is just tempt you here and there with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And you're going to be on to repeating a cycle based off disinformation, Mars and um, Gemini. And no, it's like, hell no. So you can, I mean, tower moments are destined Let's not fake the funk. And Scorpio, good thing it's you because we live for tower moments in order to create new foundations. We don't like living in stagnant old shit, all right? But this is so highly charged with passion and sexual energy that I really do feel like this is coming in in order. This, this has a lot to do with like, man, this is sexually charged AF. Um, somebody really wants you, Scorpio. All right. The Oracle card is rising sun, divine solar child reborn. Okay. The death of Osiris resulted in the birth of Horus, who is the reincarnation of Osiris. And this beautiful goddess here is letting him suckle at her teeth in order to give him nutritious nourishment, in order to grow. <sighs> and the rising sun is the crescent on top of her head. This is talking, this is page 144, the 144,000, which I will remember at some point during this incarnation. I hope so at least. But it is a dark phase and struggle is over. A new phase is upon you of hope, glory, light, and triumph. It is one through boldness, persistence. Even when you feel like giving up, you choose to stay strong, to surrender to the divine and continue with the path. You have been through much and now victory is upon you, beloved. For the divine solar child, a new consciousness within you is born. That is amazing because you know what? Like, dare you trigger a Scorpio, peoples. Like, I, you know all Scorpios, we freaking dare you, like, what be, you know, like, come at me, I will show you how I got my straight razor and my motherfucking Vaseline, and I'm ready to slice and dice, you know, because Scorpio's like, you alive, because I let you, and I'm gonna say that a lot, because that's just the truth, um, so, you know, certain signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, uh, the calmer that we are, the more either work we've done or the more pissed we really are, okay? Now, for a true Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces to have evolved, and in this sense, we're talking about you, Scorpio, whenever these triggers from the past come back up and you're not triggered by it, that is true evolution and true soul growth. And that's definitely going to irritate some people who are not expecting that of you. 
and don't want you to not need them anymore because there is codependency very strong in that reading. All right, Leo, sun, moon, and risings. Let's go ahead and give the cards a little cleansy cleanse for you. Leo, sun, moon, and rising. Leo, you rule over the fifth house of the zodiac. You are a fixed fire sign. And Leo squares to Taurus, okay? So there is some major challenges and some major motivations for you to um, create this new beginning with a new sense of self-value, self-worth, and self-love coming from unconditional, non-expectational non-expe- projects, all right? So, Leo, sun, moon, and rising. Got to find a new location for that. Okay, let's shuffle the cards. Leo, sun, moon, and rising. For the new moon happening on May the 4th, be with you of 2019. Leo, sun, moon, and rising. May the 4th be with you. Of May the 4th, 2019, for the Taurus new moon, Leo, sun, moon, and rising, for May the 4th of 2019. All right. Leo, interesting. All right. So here's what's going on with you. Uh, Immediately, the Emperor card, Major Arcana, Trump, First house, Aries, energy, divine, masculine, authoritative figure. This is you uh, kind of championing shit at the moment. Um, The emperor doesn't have a lot of time for love and romance and creativity. The emperor has a lot of time to dictate and to rule. It's royal, all right? So that's an affirmation, confirmation, Leo, that you are starting a new royal phase in your life and you are going to be um, in a position to accept more responsibility. Now, in this process, don't get too cray-cray because we got a couple things going on, the nine of swords and the ten of wands, okay? So this is Mars in Gemini, as we were just talking about with Scorpio, and then Saturn and Sagittarius, which is oppression or opposition. No, it's oppression. Oppression. <laughs> All right. Um, Ten of Wands is is like okay. Um, there's too much heat. There's too much fire. I mean, there's there's a lot. Okay, a lot of Aries energy, um, a lot of Mars energy, and also. Just a lot of, like, responsibility. Leos, are you feeling like you got way too much on your plate? Like, you're not being helped? Because I I feel like you stepping up into this place of authority and power and royal birthright is because of you been left to your own uh, own creations for so long. You know, Sagittarius is a sign about beliefs and philosophies and the divine soul journey. Saturn is, like, that is where you're going to learn your biggest lessons and something right now it's like you've been called to get over oppression you you struggled leo who i'm tapping into and you don't want to you don't want to struggle anymore you don't want this false um like this is where you're feeling really like over disinformation false truths excuse me this is a card i wanted to pull up um like government and society. And this is like, there's been a lot of arguing. There's been a lot of fighting. There's been a lot of like, it feels like a lot of heavy ego involved. And somebody in your direct environment, friend, lover, or boss, because this could definitely be boss, okay? This could be a fucktardo boss, just saying. Um, Maybe somebody thinks that you're the fucktardo boss, Leo. But the point is, is that there's a lot here saying that any discomforts that have come and that have actually blocked your path to abundance and and having success in your life have been because there's been a lot of reactive energy in your life. It hasn't been grounded. Something recently or in the past has not been grounded. It wasn't, um, 
you know, you're looking at your investments over a long-term basis and you're realizing that some of the investments have gone up in smoke and why, you know, because somebody abused their place of power within your life. Somebody really had, um, kind of like, uh, easily distracted energy. Um, a lot of this also shows me that somebody wanted way too much attention and you Leo want a lot of attention, right? This could be you again. It could be vice versa. So just do keep that in mind that if that's ringing true for your partner, then I'm not actually reading any of your energy and personally, Leo, I'm reading, whoever you're tapping into in your energetic space or physical space, because Saturn has to do with physical space, but because the 10 of wands is in reverse, it tells me that they're not there at the moment. Um, but something about their energy still has a hold on you. Maybe it was an argument or something that they did or said that you're still kind of holding and you're trying to be the emperor or they're trying to be the emperor. They're trying to control the situation. Somebody is trying to control you or you're trying to control a situation and it's not working out. So initiation is your card. This makes so much sense. Spiritual testing of Ra and lady, beautiful goddess who rules over Sirius. That's deep because you know what? This is like literally like are you maintaining your composure and your regal royalness are you remembering how divine you are leo are you continuing to allow you know your heart chakra to expand and understand that this is just a test of the universal divine forces um so yeah leo again this new moon is square so that that's kind of a, a tough energy sometimes Aquarius, it's also squaring to your energy. Initiation, page 80. When you are being spiritually initiated into the mysteries of light, love, and power, there are moments of deep challenge, such as these cards indicate. The key is to find the light within the challenge, the learning, growth, or wisdom that can be summoned to turn the challenge into an opportunity for healing. Whilst the scorching heat of raw seeks to burn through any resistance, the lady, beep, with compassion and cleverness, will protect you from burning and instead enable you to be nourished and grow from the light of raw. Let this beautiful goddess who rules over Sirius Help you pass the test of intense growth as you thrive for new life. Yeah, that's really deep, Leo. Um, because honestly, if we weren't being oppressed in our lives, we would be out on our destiny path, traveling the world, learning from different cultures, not feeling like there's something that separates us. Definitions, words, labels, boundaries, borders by dictators, whoever's the dictator in this story for you, Leo. Um, again, it could be society, the government, it could be your family, it could be your friends, it could be a relationship, or it could be a boss in a space of superiority trying to be expressed over you. And that really brings out your alpha nature. It's like alpha on alpha. So why are you being challenged right now, Leo? It's because you're being initiated. And so this is coming through deep struggle and challenge for you to maintain the light. Okay, so next up is Capricorn. And then after that is Aries. All right, so getting the cleanse on for Capricorn, sun, moon, and risings. Caps, you got some heavy ass transits going on in your sign. And uh, it's squaring to the energy that's going on in Aries, which is Venus and Mercury. Okay, you got Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde in the south node, all conjunct at the master decan. And that is total transformation of your responsibilities and your integrity. You cannot create false flags or wear false masks or create false foundations any longer as a general for your sign. So 
uh, this new moon is essentially trining or excuse. Yeah. Trining your energy. I have to shuffle cards. So <laughs> that just wanted to pop out as a message from Pluto reminding you don't fuck around. Okay. So Capricorn sun, moon and rising for May the 4th of 2019 for the new moon in Taurus. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising for the new moon happening in Taurus. Oh, may the fourth be with you. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising. All right, interesting. Two of cups, which is love. This is Venus in Cancer, and this is very much um, a soul unions. This is relationship card in the reverse. Um, this is probably speaking about something that you are wanting to manifest either because it hasn't come or it's already left. All right. So let's continue to look at this situation and see what's going on because it's like values of love um, previously leading up to this phase of time may have not been realistic or um, truly secure. So the foundation of love, what is it? What do you really find worthy and valuable? Okay, this is very fascinating. We got a major arcana, which is lust. This is the Leo card. Um, and followed by the Eight of Swords, Interference, Jupiter, and Gemini. All right, so yeah, someone or something that you're very passionate about could be vice versa. They're very passionate about you, Capricorn. Um, some sort of like external factor came in. There was some sort of complication, meddling, third party energy. Now, Jupiter in Gemini, okay, Gemini information, technology, kind of creating a false. I mean, we can doctor pictures, we can hack into people's emails and social medias, we can spy on them. This is very much a spy card. And this has to do with like, there's lust, okay? Um, there's a desire to be seen. Somebody wanted or wants attention from you, Capricorn, and it just feels like they're going about it in a very improper fashion or manner. Um, things were exposed and came to light that caused the love card which is also like soulmate energy it can also be divine unions and partnerships to actually be interfered with and the lust to not it, it was like i feel like the lust card it, it's saying that somebody was lusting after somebody else or that other energy that i feel is like a third energy it could be a friend it could be Someone that just wanted your partner and was willing to do whatever it took to interfere with your abundance. Um, so creating disinformation, causing a rift in your connection, causing distrust and disharmony. Um, that's how it really feels to me, Capricorn. And so, you know, unfortunately, these things do happen, but there is a lot like you and that part that person that the rift was created between there is actual love there and um i feel like you're both thinking about each other which is another reason why this interference card could come up because energy goes where attention flows or attention flows where energy goes so if you're thinking about this person they're thinking about you and to me this seems like it was a very important connection and um, maybe others were jealous and they didn't want to see you two happy together. And so they ran some major game. And if anybody is weak minded, then it really caused some shit to happen. So Capricorn, your Oracle card is spirit of the one who rules over Sirius, <laughs> triumph of the goddess. Okay. This is beautiful because this goddess is so powerful, all right? And let's get into this. Page 161. And yeah, Capricorn, you've had to learn to be very upfront 
and very authentic. The south node is transiting your sign, so there's been a lot of karmic relationships happen for you um, that were soulmate based, and that really were um, not just being interfered with from the physical plane, but also from the spiritual plane, like dark energies and entities taking over and taking control. Um, you, Capricorn, may have been the one that got infiltrated. This may be you being very kind of, uh, maybe you're not seeing it yet, but it's like you're going to understand the role that you played in turning the love card into the reverse, right? Not giving the attention, not nourishing, not growing, not truly loving in the moment, something that was very real. And now that awareness has happened. Okay, so beloved initiate, there are times to surrender and let go, but there are never times to give up. Persist with your bold faith and inspired action until the impossible happens. Isis has the spirit of triumph and will never fail in her quest, no matter how bold or impossible it seems. Believe. Hmm. That is very interesting, Capricorn, because it that is really saying, like, whatever challenge you've gone through, whatever sort of manipulation has happened in the life of yourself or someone who means a lot to you, even a job, you know, because the love card is about what we're really passionate about. It, it, it's like the healer in reverse. So something that we really desire to, to have as like a platform to bird, to create, to germinate, something stifled it and has made some of you Capricorns feel like giving up. And you've got to remember that the spirit is with you. Spirit is with you and pushing you forward. I feel like you're coming up on some really divine interventions. Um, this is going to come from championing. And again, a lot of the transits and aspects happening in your own personal chart, Capricorn, can really feel like it's hard to get ahead right now. And there's an overwhelming sense of responsibility to actually get ahead at any cost, no matter what. And where has that led you in the past? So your motives of your actions and tactics really do need to be, um, you really do need to be mindful of them and also aware of the tactics that other people use in your life. Okay, so next up is Aries. Aries, sun, moon, and rising. You are up. And Aries, you rule over the first house of the zodiac. Your natural ruler is Mars, and you are a fire sign. As if you didn't know all that information, right? Now, your ruling planet is presently transiting through the sign of Gemini and will move into Cancer right before the new moon or full moon that we're going to have in Scorpio on the 18th, okay? So, <laughs> while your ruling planet is busy kind of uh, being distracted by a lot of different things, um, be mindful of where you're headed, and you're headed into more healing as a general, all right? And also, your sign has the transit of Venus and Chiron, as well as um, Mercury. So Aries, naturally, there's a lot of competitive vibes going on with you. And we are going to pull some cards for the overall energy of Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising. From May the 4th, we with you, 2019, for the Taurus New Moon. May the 4th be with you, 2019, Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Popped out immediately. I'm only taking the top, well, yeah, I'm only taking the top three, which is death. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Scorpio, this is what we keep talking about. Aries, you're going through a major transformation. This can also be Mars since Scorpio is ruled over by Mars. This represents transformation at the highest level. You are going through a rebirth. And what is this rebirth about? Okay, 
Eight of Cups, which is Saturn and Pisces, it's indolence. And this is not having discipline action to create what you've been tapping into, like intuitions, dreams, imagination. These are leading you to a very like foundational structure. But this is saying that there's not an like you're coming out of a very lazy phase is what I want to say, Aries. And Aries, that's not typical of you. Um, maybe somebody in your immediate reality is actually pretty fucking lazy. And that's really pissing you off and causing this death of a situation to occur. That's more intuitionally speaking how I'm feeling about it because this is like, Say, Aries, you're the one that, that works, okay? You're the income. You're the one providing the food, the clothing, the shelter. You're the one exhausting yourself, and you're taking care of somebody at home that is just, like, literally on the couch 24 hours a day playing video games, expecting you to Netflix and chill when you get home. It could be a friend. It could be a family member. They're just eating all the food in your refrigerator. They're not giving back. And they're not even cleaning up after themselves. This is like they live in a state of illusion and delusion. Like what fucking reality do you live in where that is okay? Okay, so this says that actually you're just coming out of this. So you may be coming into the realization of it just now where you're just fucking fed up. You're done. You're not going to go through this new moon phase supporting this habit any longer. They're draining you. Okay. This energy is just sucking the fucking life out of you, Aries. And you're, you, 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 you emotionally have no more to give. Okay. This is what this is saying is that this has not just been physically and spiritually draining. This has been an emotional fucking fracking drag and you know luxury in reverse did i already say the four of cups did i already mention moon and cancer these are all water cards and this is like your intuitions are on point you rule over the head the ram all right so you charge forward like a warrior and somebody's had you act in different af and to tell you the truth like you're kind of like um, in a state of ill about it, um, you're not emotionally attracted to it at this particular time. You, you find no comfort. You find no inspiration. You find actually disinspiration from whatever this energy is that's just sucked the fucking life out of you. And um, it's like you're literally looking to end this, this relationship, job, um, whoever is literally mooching off of you. And this is very energy vampiric, okay? So, Aries, if you've already gotten out of this situation, this person is siphoning your energy, and they're probably using magic to do it because they're tapping into um, the realms of your dreams. They're tapping into your energy field. They are using magic and occult knowledge to basically manipulate your emotions. So Aries, if you've been feeling extra emotional and you don't know why, you need to really actually do some major cleansing, grounding, and cord cutting. And here we go with healing the divine masculine again, Osiris rises, all right? So let's go ahead and read what this is for you, Aries, sun, moon, and rising. Because, yeah, you're in need of a healing and the masculine, that protective, courageous energy. All right, page 71. The divine masculine within men and women is the energy that allows for protection, discernment, and healing and a sense of deep safety and holding even the most even through the most uncomfortable circumstances in life. When the masculine within us is healthy and strong, we have an inner strength to hold ourselves safe through anything. Your inner masculine is going through healing right now, growing stronger in his ability to offer you inner protection and stability so that your inner feminine can blossom with creative expression. Um, so yeah, whether you're a, a a female or a male, your strength is growing so that your your guides are here to protect you. 
And that card is really lending to trust your intuitions and your discernment because triple water, um, you're psychic right now. And you really do know the truth of a situation, no matter what somebody is telling you their intentions are. Um, the eight of cups is like, if I can create a false illusion in Aries world and tell them that I'm actually out all day looking for a job that I really do care, I really want to provide, I really want to be stable, but meanwhile, I could actually just go out and do whatever the hell I want on Aries fucking fracking dime and they will be none the wiser that I'll just be able to create like this gaslighting of Aries energy and they're going to believe me because there's such an emotional connection and some emotional codependency involved in that. Um, as long as I can just cuddle up and curl up to them and make them feel the way that they want to feel and kind of like empower them, give you a false sense of empowerment, like you're the one that wears the pants and holds the keys, but meanwhile, they are just fucking with you, Aries. Um, so let that shit go, okay? Yeah, had to say it. All right, so Libra, sun, moon, and rising <laughs> for the new moon in Taurus for May the 4th of 2019. Libra, sun, moon, and rising, and Sag, you are up next for the overall energy of the new moon on May 4th in the sign of Taurus. Oops. Um, here they pop out at us three cards exactly. All right, Libra, this is interesting. So you got the two of cups upright. Love, you rule over relationships. This is a very relationship card. This is a very divine union or partnership that we're about to speak about also just what you're passionate about in general this has a lot to do with beauty and you feeling beautiful and desired like you actually want to be desired right now libra um now we have two interesting cards and this may be that you are actually patching up a relationship with a divine partner Okay, because we have the nine of cups. Is it the nine or is it the eight? It's the five, excuse me. Five of cups, disappointment, Mars and Scorpio. Mars rules over Scorpio. And also the three of swords, which is the moon in Aquarius, your fellow air sign. And it's called peace, okay? Now, um, Libra, there is a lot of love there. But there's also been something that caused um, you to need to move on and create peace in your life. So this is coming out differently for a couple of different uh, Libra energies that I'm tapped into because in one sense, you had to detach emotionally and walk away from something that you were sexually involved with. Um, again, eight town Scorpio energy rules over soul based contracts. And it is where we commit. So more of your marriage partnerships. And also it doesn't even matter if you're legally married, though that has something to do with it. Like not being able to uphold the contract that you have with someone who is very much of a soulmate um, divine partner. And you can also call it twin flame if you want to. I don't like the terminology for twin flame because that's what creates so much disappointment is the labels that, you know, it's, it's about rebirth. We have to change. We have to transform. And Mars and Scorpio can be uh, very dark and very seductive, very secretive and very sexually charged. Now, moon in Aquarius, right? Not being overly attached to expectations and emotions, not being dependent upon like a primal rush. Some people really are. And it kind of shows me that your relationship has gone through a split. You've emotionally detached. This is like rediscovering the divine union partnership you have with yourself, the relationship that you have with yourself, learning how to be passionate about the new transformation that you're going through. And 
Also to let go and make peace. So this could be you rekindling something. It can also just be you making peace in a general sense and practicing forgiveness. You don't have to do this up close and personal. This could be through the etheric realm. You don't have to call, write, nor text and say, I forgive you or any of that. You know, also Libra, it looks like somebody's trying to patch things up with you. They may be wanting to passionately express something that caused, you know, the truth behind why things went wrong. So for any of you Libras who are going through the ending of a marriage or a relationship that was based off of infidelity or, um, you know, just somebody trying to create too much outside of the home, not paying attention to you. It, it caused you to grow and it caused you to find a true sense of love and value for yourself. And it caused you to become passionate about a new direction and find emotional peace. So the energy that we have for the Oracle card is Cartoach, Divine Names of Power. Libra, this is really a big deal for you because, you know, Libra, you, all you want is to create peace and harmony. You know, your ruling planet is involved in this you know, it's the ruler of Taurus also. So you are starting a new phase. And Libra, there's a lot of you who are going through some major transitions. And my candle just burned out. I'm going to have to get a new one. What a shame. Sad. You're not going to get a cleansing. All right. Uh, Cartoach is page, I don't know. Ah, 28. All right. Where is it at? It's over here somewhere. Lady Isis initiates you now into her special mysteries, the use of sacred, sacred anointations. The words that you speak are rapidly gaining power. To benefit from this power, rather than to be undermined or held back by it, practice thoughtful speech and clear your heart of old unforgiveness, which can poison your words unintentionally. As your heart grows in purity, you will be able to speak with spiritual authority and what you speak of will come into being more swiftly, obviously, and obviously. Goddess who rules over Sirius is initiating you as a master healer in her sacred tradition of divine names and power. So yes, Libra, no matter how disappointing a situation was, there's a lot that could be healed in this particular timeline whenever we learn that our words are spells. And in order to really create something new and, you know, based in love, because love is not weakness, Libra, and emotions are not either. You're being asked to really overcome a majorly trans, a majorly, not just transformative, but hard situation hard lessons and learning that you literally have needed to heal from and to let go of and not stay emotionally connected and stagnant major major opportunities for you are abounding and i will actually grab a tea light for you sagittarius um Yes, and remember, if you want your sign to be read first, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe so that it gets the most views because each time that I do this, I am going to base it off of which sign had the most views. Okay, hold on. I have to roll over and get a tea like candle. So, that we can continue on. And let me pimp the matrix while I'm at it because we are here for the pimpifications. And hmm, yeah, so FYI, you know, this is just a once through. I don't edit my videos. I'm gonna actually start editing some videos because I'm going to bring out transits and 
they'll be applicable to the time frames that we're in and going through, but also they'll be applicable to just knowing what it means whenever like transiting Venus conjuncts transiting Uranus transits, meaning where the planet's transiting at the moment, like all new moon, full moons are transits happening now versus your natal chart placement. So what are the transits in reference to your natal and or your progress chart? If you would like to know, definitely once again, go to Sun Soul Astrology dot com and book a personal reading with me you can also find all the pimp my matrix clothing there and as well i do have some of them uploaded to teespring which is right below this video if you prefer that and there's clothing accessories you know the pisces all every every sign has their whole line uh, including yoga mats and yoga wear okay so sagittarius sun moon and rising Oh, the overall energy for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. For May the 4th, be with you, of 2019. The new moon in Taurus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. May the 4th be with you. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. You're going to burn fire upon them, I already know. All right, Sag, ruler of the ninth house, ruled by Jupiter, ruler of philosophies and beliefs in the galactic center of the Milky Way, where you are producing our third dimensional reality from your abundance, and you rule over destiny. So, lots of fire energy. All right, also a major arcana kind of pops out. These are your three energies, the queen of wands, Sagittarius, this is your card. Also, Princess of Wands, Leo energy, and the Wheel of Fortune in reverse, your ruling planet, Jupiter, okay? Now, Queen of Wands is very indicative of someone who is incredibly wise and full of intuitions. Like, they, they are not just based in intuitions, but they also have knowledge, higher ascended knowledge, educated powerful, beautiful, structured. Somebody who could put the pieces of the puzzle together and know what the freaking frack is going on. Followed by the Princess of Wands, Leo energy once again. All of this can cross-reference all fire signs. So it can apply to um, you being involved with like an energy of Aries, Leo, or another Sagittarius. But um, a fire is about alchemy and transformation. It's like something, whenever things burn, they, they, they grow back more nutritious. But once, when they're burning, it's kind of unpleasant and um, <laughs> it, it darkens everything. It kind of crusts, it kind of makes it crusty. And the Princess of Wands, again, is, is a more immature energy. So this is somebody who may be very jealous of you, Sagittarius. And um, they don't... <sighs> They're jealous of how you're seen. They're jealous of what you have, and they want it for themselves, okay? So that's why I feel like this Major Arcana Trump card, the Wheel of Fortune, your ruler is reversed because the wheel is not moving in the proper direction yet. And so it does represent to me that this princess energy is interfering, and it's... <clears throat> distracting so jupiter is a, ben a benefic planet okay it wants to bring the blessings jupiter is presently retrograde in the transits which means that this is about a spiritual growth process and to me the princess of wands has not spiritually grown nor expanded though the group of aries that i or um, sagittarius that i'm tuned into you have done the work and somebody's blocking what I would call your, um, your happy or your wish fulfillment, whatever that may be in. Somebody may be jealous of the position in a relationship or a job or just even in your family unit. So Sagittarius, do make sure to not entertain lower vibrational energies that are holding you back from doing what you really need to do. And if somebody in your immediate environment say they're jealous of a relationship, they're trying to come in between you and your partner, and that's blocking 
your growth together like that wheel the destiny path has come to an end the the wheel of fortune in reverse something has to change in order for that to start spinning again in the right direction and it's at a standstill so there is some major energies and it, this is a lot of feminine energy to tell you the truth so let's see what isis has to say as a clarifier for sagittarius sun moon and rising for may the fourth new moon be with you the high priestess mysteries revealed in the eyes of the goddess who rules over sirius okay this is kind of a big deal all right because high priestess is piscean cancerian energy it's water energy and it's very intuitive like the high priestess stands over all so what i'm picking up is that sagittarius this is your energy okay just like the queen of wands and um the sagittarius group that i'm picking up on you yourself are um a spiritual guide you are what some people would call a guru a shaman you're most definitely a light worker uh, you have a community of people that look up to you. You you bring benefit and blessings to people, and um, you help others level up. And somebody in your tribe around your vibe is pretty peanut butter and jelly about what you got going on. And so you really need to stand in your power and remain the high priestess. You see everything coming. So whatever this energy is, you already saw it before it happened. And I feel like you are not really actually entertaining it all that much. I feel like you're okay with it. Like you're okay being in your power and in your strength. You're not looking backwards. And that's actually a really big deal, Sagittarius, because I feel like somebody's really trying to trigger you. And it just doesn't actually mean that much to you. And for the Sagittarius that I'm tapped into at the moment. Now, page 77 is beloved goddess who rules over Sirius gazes upon you now and behind her vast eyes mysteries are revealed a new clarity around a direction is unfolding be willing to wait for the full reveal but also recognize what is happening at this time you will be gaining valuable insights into where you are being led and for what purpose it is an exciting moment in the unfoldment, in your unfoldment. Have reverence in an open heart and mind and wait patiently for the grand revelation that is on its way. So, you know, with that in mind, it really does show me that whatever path you were involved with previously had to come to a halt, the wheel of fortune in reverse and stop because you are actually getting um, more downloads about your destiny. And because of some decisions that were made that had karmic repercussions on behalf of others who are in your uh, space, whether present or previous, they're, they're not allowed to continue on the path with you and they actually have to be removed. And you've been sensing this coming for a while. It may have already happened for some of you. And again, a lot of energy has been being brought back up for all of us to look back again that first week in November in reference to now. All of that is still somewhere in our energetic field. So, yeah, remember the more, there's more to the story. And even though you know so much about it right now, Sagittarius, you're going to find out more. All right. Um, and yeah, you can find it out through dreams and through intuitions, through channeling sessions, through any sort of occult divination tools, through astrology, through ther tarot, and also through work with the pendulum. And I'm going to pull a couple of overall cards for everybody. And thank you once again for tuning in. Um, again, please do timestamp this in case I don't get to it. I got a lot going on. And um, yeah, check out the playlist for May 
for the energy clarifiers for each of your sun, moon, and rising signs. Be sure to watch all of them. If you're interested in how things are going relationship-wise, then see where you have Venus in your natal chart and watch that sign. Also, you could do the same with Mars, especially if you're looking for more direction and more passion right now. Um, so, you know, I have Mars and Pisces. I have Venus and Sagittarius. So I would watch those videos in reference to that if I wanted to learn more. Oh, the sun card. Yay. Okay, this is an amazing overall collective card. Fifth house, Leo energy, creative projects, new businesses, new opportunities for love and romance that is truly authentic to who we are, that truly activates us, inspires us, and allows us to drop any old conditions, preconceived notions, and just move on into the light. This is our soul. Remember, the sun is the soul, and it rises in the chart. That's why we have the rising sign. And so we ourselves know who we are. This is like the ego self that knows who the self is, is birthing into creation. And one Isis, or, oops, oracle card for the overall collective of all 12 signs, May 4th. Power over seven scorpions, power to conjure lower vibrational forces. And this has to do with naming our poisons, jealousy, greed, ego, fear, doubt, insecurities, that whenever we're not sure why we're feeling instability, we can actually check in with ourselves and see what's holding us back from having a sun card moment. That's a major arcana. We're beast mode on right now. But... Um, whenever we can name them, we can gain dominion over them. And that's gaining control of those lower forces that have stifled us and held us back. This is the eighth house Scorpio card. This new moon is in Taurus, the second house oppositional energy. All right. And for any of you who are curious, it's page 125. You are being initiated into the magic of conjuring to have the power to affect lower vibrational forces through your own will and spoken word. You are guided to use this powerful gift with compassion and discernment, with mercy and non-judgment. You can then manage any toxicity in your life swiftly and with great effect, okay? So this has to do with managing those things that are obstructive, toxic, toxic relationships, with anything and everything that is in our lives, letting that go, identifying what it is, gaining control over it, and allowing this new session of time to birth itself into creation. And I love you so very much. I am wishing you the best new moon phase ever for this Taurus experience. And please definitely check me out on my networks as well as my website, Instagram, Sun Soul Astrology, and also on Facebook business page. Okay? I love you so much. God bless.